Welcome back to uh, Takedown Wrestling. I'm Tony Hager. We've got Aaron Pico in the Nike Wrestling Hot Seat. How are we doing today? It's been a while. Yeah, it has. I don't know. Last Was it last April we, we spoke? Before yeah, the we, match? Oh, man. We talked uh, We talked around the Aegon, Aegon time, uh, promoting that fight, and then a little bit after it. But uh, I, I tried to keep out of your hairs because you've been busy trying to trying to make that Olympic team and ultimately uh you know it didn't happen but uh I know you took a little bit of a break from that and was it was it good for you to step away from the ring and the mat for a little bit oh absolutely you know I went on vacation for for about five days just kind of relaxed decompressed you know uh ate some good food swam in the ocean watched my movie got to got to sleep in so it was good. It was really good for me. So, um, you know, just to review everything, think about some things, and um, yeah, I'm glad I did it. This transition from wrestling to MMA, uh, lots of stuff are popping up on the internet. Some true, some some false. And are you now training exclusively at American Kickboxing Academy, or are you just kind of popping your head in and out of there? No, no. Right now, um, I was up there doing a little bit of training, doing some wrestling. Uh, a little bit of boxing, grappling. I actually got a got some workouts in at Stanford with uh, Jamil Kelly and Joey McKenna. So staying up on my wrestling because um, I am wrestling in the World Cup here in LA. So um, I'm starting to to uh, you know dabble with some stuff in the MMA world as far as kickboxing, some grappling, and um, and things like that. But I'm I'm focused right now on the World Cup and uh, putting on a good show uh, June 11th and 12th. So I'm still wrestling right now and. and uh, Make, making sure I'm sharp. Yeah, I mean you're you're second in line. So if something happens to Frank, you, we just got the news that he's he's headed to Rio. So yeah, I, I got to imagine that's that's exciting for you. I mean, it's not you going to Rio right now, but you got to stay on your game, your wrestling game, in case something like that happens. I absolutely, I'm I'm the Olympic alternate right now, so I'm always staying staying in good shape. You know, eating the right food, staying healthy. Um, so I'm always always uh, ready to go. But first things first. Uh, Molinero is the first guy, so you know you've got to stay healthy and uh, go, you know go to the Olympics. You know, back to uh, you know training wrestling for this World Cup. Uh, wrestling fans, MMA fans, you know they they don't know where you're headed, and uh, you know we see on the you know, boxing and and this World Cup thing, you're kind of going back and forth, and that's that's good. That's how you've always been. You've always been training MMA, boxing, jujitsu, yeah. and stuff like that in between all of your wrestling events. And I guess when it comes to American Kickboxing Academy and why you went there, did Daniel Cormier, did he, you know, he's a wrestler, did he get you there? Or how did you end up at AKA? Um, well, I know Daniel. I know Daniel very well. And, um, but the main, main thing is Bob Cook. Uh, Bob Cook is um, a trainer over there. He helps all the guys out there, DC, Lou Brockhold. Um, so I'm in contact with him. He's, he, He's uh, you know, developing me, you know, watching me where the areas that I'm that um I'm deficient in in MMA. So I communicated with Bob and asked him if I can go out there and just do some training, and he said yeah, absolutely. So he's uh, going over there. He's watching me, and like I said, he's got a great eye for MMA, and he's uh, watching out for the the weak points of my game and and uh, just just developing both. So recently online there was some information out there about you being involved with Josh Thompson, some true, some false. You know, wrestling fans are, are celebrating this because they, they love you. They know you as a, as a wrestler. But when any fighter gets taken out of a, a fight that feeds their family, I mean, I got to imagine that you're not too happy about it. You're not celebrating this situation. Well, I could tell you one thing. I can tell you one thing is don't believe everything that the media the media puts out there. You know, the media can put out a lot of stuff. People say certain things, but um, I mean, there's an undisclosed injury. What happened to Josh Thompson? So, uh, anytime uh, a fighter gets hurt in training camp or anything like that, I don't think it should be celebrated. And I'm, I'm and I don't feel really good about that. People saying that it's a celebration. I don't know what they're celebrating. It's uh, that's how a man makes his, you know, living and things like that. I don't want to go um, on too much about it, but no, uh, don't believe everything the media has to say about it. And, um, yeah, it's not, it's not something that, like I said, it's an undisclosed yeah. injury, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't know too much about it. 
Well, you know, they're uh, they're saying you're one of the up and coming hardest hitters. There there is an MMA, 19 years old, and I gotta, you know, Aaron, have you? Who's been the hardest hitter that's hit you? Have you had your bell rung yet? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I've had my bell rung many times in sparring. Uh, I sparred like a lot of like professional boxers, and and coming up from the youth, I sparred a lot and going to gyms all over. I actually traveled to Japan for for a month and did strictly boxing. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Is yeah. there is there a name that specifically just like you, uh, think you no, remember no. that? F- that punch no, i don't really know the exact name i mean like i said i sparred so many guys just traveling traveling around the area and uh i mean you catch it i mean you've, it happens you've been punched you know, a lot very much i mean if it's happening very if you're getting your bell rung and sparring all the time then then there's there's a problem but it happens here and there but yeah in, in wrestling you always seem like you remember the guys that beat you and I was just kind of curious if that's the same in MMA when you get beat, but also just maybe you got choked out like you've never been choked out before. This is something that I'm I'm just kind of dabbling in now that more wrestlers are trans, transitioning to MMA. So I was just kind of curious if it's the same. You know, you, you remember those type of guys. Uh, that's just kind of hard because you spar. Like I said, I spar so many guys and. And, uh, and one thing about if you're sparring in MMA or boxing, you're going to get hit no matter what. So, like, there's there's many guys where, you know, you've been hit a certain way or, you know, got you with a good body shot or, I mean, it's, it kind of happens. It's just part of, part of the game. You know, having trained all over, like you said, and having your bell rung sparred with some of the top guys around uh, the country, around the world, do you feel like you're ready to compete against – Guys like uh, like Josh Thompson or other names atop of, of Bellator right now. Uh, well, right now I have I have zero MMA fights, so I look at it like this. I'm I'm you know obviously I have a great foundation in wrestling. I've got a great foundation in striking, but there's other things to MMA. That's what a lot of people don't realize is that just because you're a great striker and just because you're a great wrestler, yeah, of course you're going to have an advantage over you know most of the fighters. But there's so many pieces that are in MMA, the, the grappling game, the jiu-jitsu, the kicking. Um, and those are all, those are all areas that, that people, you know, you, you need to blend all together. There's people that have been grappling and doing jiu-jitsu for years and, and kicking. So um, I'm not there yet, but I'm going to get there. I mean, obviously, like I said, I've had, got, got a great foundation in wrestling and in striking, but um, I haven't been fully immersed in it. So once I do and I start developing, um, I'm going to leave it to the, the professionals, my team, to see, you know, see if I'm ready. The Bob Cooks, um, my agent, Duane, and um, my boxing trainer, Dominic, we're going to, you know, work, you know, have a meeting. And when they say that I'm ready to take on the challenges that, that are by ahead of me, then I'll make them, let them be the call. You know, com- compare yourself to a, a, a current pro, if, if you if you do that, I guess. I mean, do do you use your wrestling in reverse to stay off the mat? Or are you focusing on submissions, ground and pound? How do you want to win fights? Oh, I want to knock guys out. That's what I want to do. That's that's the best. That's that's how you remember is when you knock, when you knock guys out. Of course, I mean there's always a you know there's there's a fight to always shift a certain way. There's things you know, obviously you can't knock everybody out, but um, I want to be remembered as you know a hard hitting hard-hitting guy that that um was an all-around fighter i don't want to be just known as you know a guy that takes a guy down and does down and down yeah that's nice and that's good but i want to be known as as an all-around fighter got some good good uh skill sets that i've developed from a young age so i'm just going to keep enhancing them incorporate other things and uh, i'll be ready to go so you think your wrestling style i mean you're, you're extremely difficult to score on in wrestling do you think your defense will keep the fights that you hopefully have here in the future on your feet, not on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've got, like I said, I've got a strong wrestling foundation. So anybody that, and I wrestle with the, on the highest level. So I've seen all kinds of takedowns. I've seen, I've seen guys get in, um, you know, on my legs that can defend it off. But what you have to, like what people have to realize is that fighting wrestling is different than, than just strictly wrestling. you got to learn how to, transition transition into the you know from you know punching into a takedown or you know getting punched and a guy shooting in on your legs it's because now it's not just you know clubs and you can 
you can just shoot in on a guy. You got guys throwing kicks, elbows, punches, and trying to shoot in on you. So there's so many factors that go into into fighting. But I'm very fortunate that I that I've got, um, like I said, a good good wrestling base. So I definitely am going to be able to defend off shots, and and uh, guys aren't just going to be able to go in there and take me down. That just won't happen. No way. So there's no there's no plan to have a professional fight. You vote. You've keeping your 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 team is going to help decide that for you. They've done that for you in your wrestling career, deciding if you should wrestle in juniors or seniors. And your coaches, do you have the same coaches that are in your camp for wrestling that is going to transition into MMA too, or do you have uh, separate? Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. We, my team, we always we're, we're really you know, close um, close family in my team and. Um, we always sit together. It's not just one guy calling calling the shots. We, we sit down at the table. We have we talk and and we we fill we write out the pros and cons to everything. And and uh, and uh, I'm I'm still young, so I still have a long way to go. And I can you know I am not you know big headed, so I could take the advice of others. And if they feel something is, should be a certain way, and then we talk about it. And at the end of the day, we make a sound decision as a team. That's just that's just how it is, and that's how it's always going to be. We're all, I'm gonna always take the advice of others because as soon as you stop doing that and thinking that you can do it on your own, you just headed uh, for disaster. That's the way I look at it. So it was just recently announced that you're going to be wrestling back in Cali. It's been three yeah. years since you've been there. How did that all come about? Did it get brought up to you or to your team? And how did that decision go into to wrestle at the World Cup? Um. Well, I've been wrestling 70 kilograms you know, quite a while now, you know, at some tournaments internationally. So I've wrestled a lot of the top guys at 70 kilograms. So right after the Olympic trials, uh, they said that I wanted to wrestle in the World Cup. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, like I said, I went away for a little bit. Puerto Rico kind of thought about some things and uh, came back. And I was like, yeah, I want to wrestle, wrestle in the World Cup. That's going to be awesome, especially here in L.A. Last year I was on the team, but I didn't wrestle. So just being there and watching the environment – Iranian fans and the fans all over the world. I was like, man, of course I'll, I'll wrestle on this. Like, that's like the top competition. My family could come watch me, and uh, yeah, why not? I'm gonna ready, ready to go put on the show. I gotta imagine the Cali faithful will come out. Have have people reached out to you? Do you do you have a big uh, big plan to have a, a big uh, following or a section just for Aaron Pico? Uh I know there's a lot of people coming, but. Uh, yeah, it's my home. I've got a lot of family here, friends coming out to watch me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's going to be a lot of people there to support me. We're like what, all, less than 30 days away from that event. Like 29 or something like that. Yeah, yeah less than 30 days. And so a lot of a lot of people in the wrestling world, and I'm sure the MMA world, were thinking, okay, Aaron's going to compete at the World Cup, and then he'll go and train some wrestling because the Olympics are around and then go back to MMA. Well, I was thinking that, but then UWW just announced that they're going to have this non-Olympic weight uh, world championships. Yeah. So is that something that, I mean, we don't know the whole details of how that team will be determined, but are you excited about that? Is that something that you think that you will be compete in? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, first thing is first, like I said, World Cup, and um, we'll go from there. But I just, like, I honestly just heard about it like a day ago, I just was reading about it. So I haven't even given, I don't even know anything about it. Winter trials for the thing or like, I don't even know anything. Yeah, there's nothing out yet. I mean, there's no, yeah. they haven't said if there's going to be trials at Fargo or at another event that they could possibly have. So I just, uh, I, I just got to imagine that somebody that's not going to the Olympics, that, that doesn't think they're going to the Olympics anyways, has got to be excited about that opportunity to either go up a weight class or go down a weight class. And somebody like yourself that is looking for those world titles. You haven't got that yet. You haven't got that to that pinnacle yet. And you want to be remembered. Uh, that that would be an opportunity that you would take. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't definitely I'm going to be world champion. Obviously the pinnacle of the sport of wrestling is to be world champion. And, um, I've got other, I've got a, you know, full play right now, which is good. I like it, but uh, I'm going to just take it one, one step at a time and, and uh, go day by day. Right now is the World Cup and, and uh, only cross that path. 
sit down and discuss it and see where we go. So from, let's just say, two years ago to now in, in training, you've got all these things going on, sponsors. Did you think when you decided, hey, I'm not going to go the college route, did you think that you would be farther along in your wrestling career as far as status goes? Or do you do you feel like you're – you are not to that point. Like, I guess, are you happy where you're at or are you, are you um, disappointed? I'm happy where I'm at. Absolutely. No question about it. Uh, I can go beyond wrestling. The people that I've met, the wrestling that I've, that I've seen, the wrestling rooms, the different cultures, that's, that's winning in itself. That's, that's something that I'm going to hold on forever and I'm going to be able to pass down, pass down to my kids and tell them the experiences that I've had. As far as the wrestling, I'm nine, I'm 19 years old right now. I'm technically a high school senior, and and the people that I've beaten, the NCAA champions, the world champions, um, second in the Olympic trials, fell a little short. But I look at the positives and everything that I've done. I've come a long way. I've come come a long way since 2013, winning the cadet world title to now. I think I've progressed dramatically, and 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 the way I feel comfortably wrestling overseas, being away, being able to you know wrestle in foreign foreign countries of course i've been i've been improved like dramatically so i'm definitely happy happy where i'm at absolutely 100 percent. well that's that's good and good to hear i your your positivity is something that i think young kids are looking up to i look up to you know to have the to have that courage to to go this route, Aaron, I think is is tough to do. And oh, uh, you're obviously on the path that you you want to be on. Your team has got you on, and uh, you know we look forward to seeing you in California, yeah. in your home, no. in your backyard, and uh, hopefully the fans uh, pack the forum. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's like like I said, I'm still a high school senior. I could be, you know, just going and crushing guys in high school, winning state titles. But at the end of the day, you're not. You're not improving you know i think every day you should be looking how to get better how to get better if you're just smashing guys and and, and you feel good about it and that's yeah, good but what life is really about is pushing yourself and you know testing those waters of you know not knowing what's going to happen but knowing that you put everything that you can and the work that you've done and come come out come out on top and and uh and see yourself for over the years it's just it's just awesome so i'm excited how many countries have you been to i don't know i've been to a lot i did a lot of traveling especially when i first made the decision to to forego high school and college i was on the road a lot i was and i don't know Uzbekistan, italy russia ukraine bulgaria i don't know japan it's been it's been a lot it's been a it's lot nuts. I mean, yeah. i'm 32 years old i've been to two countries and uh, I'm pretty jealous, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, keep uh, keep doing what you're doing. And uh, I know, uh, you know, being in the limelight is uh, sometimes good and sometimes bad. And you're handling it the right, you know, the the way that uh, we we know you by. So uh, keep it up. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron.